Hey folks, it's Gecko, and today I'm bringing you my September wrap up and reading update. Because, yeah. So, first I'm going to go through the books I read. I read six, which is for me a pretty good reading month as it is. I am now seven books ahead of my reading goal, which is amazing. So, without further ado, I'm just going to go through the books I read and then catch up where I'm at. The first book I finished. It took me almost a month to read, which is sad because it's, it's a really short book and it was really gripping and engaging. I just wasn't in the frame to read, right, right frame and to read. And that is Normal People by Sally Rooney. <laughs> Late to the party on this one, but I loved it. <laughs> I don't really like this sort of general fiction, romancey type thing, but this, this was really good. As well as these two people, Coral, Connell and Marianne who are from the same town in Ireland and um, they go to school together and then they go to the same college and it's their relationship, friendship and I tabbed my favourite bit which is where the casual racism gets called out and I really enjoyed that so yeah, I gave this 5 stars and I'm intrigued to see what she, to read the other two books and to watch the TV show but all in all, I'm so glad I read this and thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. Next, I read a book that I've been waiting for for a long time. I requested it in the li from the library back in July. And I've only just got it. In fact, I got it three weeks ago. No, I got it two weeks ago. And that is When Aiden Became a Brother by Kyle Lukoff and, and illustrated by Keilani Juanita. And what I really enjoyed about this book is it's about a little boy called Aiden, who's a trans guy, preparing to become a big brother, and all the stuff that that entails. <sighs> and yeah, it's about not just being trans, but about what being an older sibling is all about. Now, I'm the youngest sibling, so for me this was quite an interesting read, but as a trans person I really enjoyed the representation and the illustrations are amazing. And it's not too complicated wording. So yeah, this is an amazing book. And then I finished because, ooh, sorry, I finally finished. I've been reading it all month because it's long. Also, my chair is really kind of just staying still because it's a long book and it's a very, very good book. And that is We Free the Stars by Hafsa Faisal. I absolutely enjoyed it. There's a bookmark in there because I'm trying to flatten it. Um, this is the US hardcover. Um, a little. I really enjoyed this. It's the sequel to Rehunt the Flame, which is the story of a girl called Zafira and a prince called Nazir, and they're on a quest to bring magic back to their kingdom. And I genuinely, I think I have. Yes, there it is. So I can't really tell you about this one because it's the sequel. But what I can do is tell you about this. And this is the original UK uh, paperback cover. I've since got the new one that matches the paperback, which is here. And that's this is the one I actually read, but the paper the hardcover looks better for the video, so I did read it, I promise. Um but this is okay. People lived because she killed. Zafira is the hunter. Forced to disguise herself as a man, she braved the cursed forest to feed her people. People died because he lived. Nazir is the infamous prince of death, assassinating those foolish enough to defy his autocratic father, the Sultan. Both are legends in the kingdom of Arawia, but neither wants to be. Both are embarking on a quest to return magic to their kingdom, which as their journey unfolds, an ancient, an ancient evil begins to stir. I thoroughly recommend this duology. Amazing, amazing. And I'm super excited for Tempest to Tea. Half Surprise Out is an amazing author. And I 100% recommend.
and these two books. And yeah, it's sort of forbidden romance, enemies to lovers, magic, that kind of thing. But beautiful writing, some laugh out loud moments, and some interesting. Um, I learned some words in Arabic because of the book because it's a it's an Arabian inspired fantasy. Which is absolutely wonderful. I'll just quickly show you the map. Because, wow. <laughs> I want that as a print. Every time I talk about these books, I say I want the map as an art print. I would love to put it on the board. It would be amazing. Oh, from amazing, the first three books in the month I read were, three, uh, were both uh, all three five stars. This is the low point of the month. I read Siddhartha by Herman Hesse and I gave it three stars. I don't know if I didn't read it at the right moment in my life because I truly enjoyed The Alchemist and it's a similar sort of book but this did absolutely nothing for me. I'm glad it was short, I nearly DNF'd it, it's 121 pages but I pushed through and gained absolutely nothing. Um, I'm sure if I read it again at the right point, it would be amazing. So I'm not ruling out that this is actually great. I just think it was it was either the right time or the wrong time, or it was not for me. And uh, it's about this guy called Siddh Siddhartha, who's a Brahmin's son, and he goes on a spiritual journey to achieve a higher state of being. And yeah, it's based on the author's profound regard for Indian transcendental philosophy. I didn't enjoy the writing style, I didn't enjoy the story. Half the time I was like, Siddhartha, you're being a dick. Like, why are you like this? So, uh, yeah. I don't think this was for me. Which is sad, because I really wanted to enjoy it. This cover is gorgeous. Then it picked back up because I read this. I read Kiki's Delivery Service by Aiko Kadani, which was translated from the Japanese by someone I can't tell you who because there's a sticker. And I don't think it says anywhere else. Unfortunately, this is the only one in. English. The rest of the series aren't in English and that's really sad because I would love to read it but this book is cute. It's about this girl called Kiki who is a witch and her, her cat, her and her cat when she turns 13 fly to a new city to be a witch and to look after them. She creates her own delivery service and this book, this tiny tiny little book, when I say tiny I'm going to compare it to a US hardcover it's so tiny but oh it's so cute the illustrations there's not very many because there doesn't need to be but just sometimes sometimes there's a little like right there i think joe todd stanton did a fantastic job with these i want to find I got a I got a pin badge of Gigi, who is the cat, in a fairy loop for the June box, the Animal Companions box, and because of McGonagall, who's currently in my window, I wanted to find out more because she's a black cat, and honestly, Gigi is one of my favourite Animal Companions, and I can't wait to watch the movie, and I really want this book. And it was only published in English last year because of the success of the film. So it's really sad and I really want to read the rest of them. But I can't read Japanese. So, but yeah, I love this book. And I'm definitely going to be buying my own copy at some point because I need to own this book. <laughs> and the last book I read was Tempted by PC and Kristen Cast. Um, I read this on audiobook, which was lovely. I really enjoyed being in this world again. And I picked this one because 
this is one of the ones I don't think I've reread a lot. Um, but it was nice to see a character in another character's relationship for me. Um, and also the issues that this book brings up and the choices we make. This, this is a series that starts, the first book is called Marked. And it follows a girl called Zoe Ripper and she's marked as a vampire. And she kind of changes life, she's school, species, you know, there's a biological thing. And this is about her and her friends as they face big bad ancient evil. And this book is really when it changes from just being a, just a teen sort of series. This is when it amps up and you really feel that because this book doesn't take place over a long period of time. I think it takes place maybe three or four days. And it's really tense. So I really do recommend this series in general. There's 12 books in the main series and four books in the spin-off series. PC Carl says she's open to writing more books in the series, but not for a long time because she's got other projects she wants to do, which is fair enough. Now this book, it, this series isn't without its problems. Uh, it's quite problematic in places in respect to the Cherokee representation in this. But Kristen Cast is half Cherokee, so I'm not saying that it excuses the problems in this book. I'm just saying I don't think people are more aware of that. So, again, not perfect, but I love the series. And this series personally got me through high school, so this series will always mean the world to me. So those are the six books I read. Now, remember, I was reading it, I've been reading it for a long time. I had to get my own copy because someone requested my copy from the library, even though there were a few copies that were um, available. They just decided that the one I was reading, that had um, someone had taken it out, they didn't, I don't know. So anyway, I had to get my own copy, which means I'm actually not as far in the book as um, I wish I was. I'm now on page 274 instead of 320. But, it's a smaller book, which is good. It's not as big, but it's still, how many pages is this? It needs to be flattened. It's 1,166 pages, so it's 400 pages less, but still over 1,000 pages. So, yeah, I feel good about having just read that much. And this is like four contemporaries. But it, it's really good. Um, it's not scary. It's quite funny in places actually. I'm still enjoying it, I'm still reading it and I have a really pretty copy now. So that's nice and I don't have to worry about returning it. And finally, I am halfway through, over halfway through, um, Red Wine Royal Blue for a second time and I'm enjoying this book so much. I'm so glad I picked it up. I've been saying I wanted to reread this book for the longest time and this time I'm finding so much more to fall in love with and uh, it's just a cute romance that I've been wanting to reread. So yeah, that's where I'm up to. And uh, I can't wait to continue to read more books like that. Um, my TBR for next month will be up at some point. I'm waiting for a couple of books to come in. Technically I'm also waiting for one from the library so we'll see how long that one takes. But I'm hoping you can read the Talia Hibbert books out of order because the library only had one. And it, whenever they do a shelf check, I'll get it before the end of the month, hopefully, because there is a copy available. So hopefully that's quick. But yeah, these are all the books I read. That is completely the wrong order. No, it's not. Yes, it is, because I finished that and then I started reading that one. Alright. Right. So these are the books that I've read. This is a really scary thing to hold up because of the uh, thing. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know what you think. Let's have a conversation. That would be fun. Um, yes. So let me know if you've read any of these books. I am genuinely very excited to continue to specifically read this one. This one I already know what happens, but it's really cute on a reread. So. Yeah. Good tea. Oh. So yeah. Um. As 
because I am filming this on the 1st of October, happy British Black History Month, I'm going to be reading some black British authors this month, if I'm waiting for the Tally Hibber books to come in, I've got a couple already, I won't be exclusively reading black British authors, oh, well British black authors, I'll be reading a couple of books from black authors from around the world as well, but I will be trying to focus on black British because British Black History Month. I've got one non-fiction that I'm excited to read as well. So that'll be how I kick my month off. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, leave a comment, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye.